So here's stuff over the weekend that I sold. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten items, and then I have three uh, lots. I have a record lot, a book lot, and a CD lot. So 13 items, 13 sales for eBay. Um, this is the last, not the last, this is the second to last. There's one more. I had dozens and dozens of these reloading manuals. And I have another one here that I sold. So I believe I only have one left. I got those months ago for a donation. Someone who had a ton of reloading manuals, ammunition, rifle, hunting, shooting, all of that stuff. A ton of those, and I've sold the majority of it. Here's another one. Uh, Handbook of Cartridge Reloading. I also have um, this book, The Well of the Unicorn. And this one is really interesting. It's super rare, apparently. It's called Exercising in Bed. Yes, that's what it's called. The guy who wrote it, Sanford Bennett, actually signed it. Whoopsie. Uh, you can see his little card there. He signed it here. And I had it listed for 150 bucks, and I took a $75 offer, so that was nice. The book's from, the, like, 1905 or 1908 or something like that. So anyway, here's some sales from the weekend. It's been uh, it's a good sales, good sales over the weekend, especially considering that I had my warehouse sale, so that's always nice. And my lister is already listing more items uh, that I gave her to list. Here's the box of records that I sold, or here's the box holding the records I sold. There's 16 of them. They're in here. And I've had these for several years up on eBay, probably like two and a half years. They finally sold. I should say I took an offer, $175. So that was a nice sale. And I get to get rid of it. I put it inside of a box, packing material, uh, inside of another box with packing material around it. So it won't get damaged. Good morning, guys. It is Monday, November 9th, 2020. I'm Andrew from 510 Books, and I'm here at 510 Books in our warehouse. It is about 11.45 in the morning. <clears throat> I'm going to be heading back home to eat, pack up some stuff for eBay, and then probably come back. But um, I wanted to share with you what's going on post-sale. Uh, I got my giant sign. Got my last Gaylord over there. So now I have a lot of stuff to go through, which is great. Uh, and I wanted to share with you down here on the floor, I had a bunch of CDs. I don't know if you remember. And now they're over here stacked up because I've already scanned them with my handy dandy scanner. That's still working, still charging. I had for me my KDC. <clears throat> and what I found from that is here, uh, these CDs here is what I was able to pull for Amazon. Um for Amazon Merchant Fulfilled and FBA. And then these are ones I've pulled so far for eBay. As I go through them, uh, my next step is, I don't have to check the discs because I had a person who lists for me actually came in last week and helped me sort out those two um, mixed media Gaylords. And so she actually checked all the discs for me, which is good. So that, that speeds up the process. So now what I'm going to do is is sort them into categories to so one category will be to keep for my local sale here to put up on the for sale here locally in my uh, cd racks another one will be for ebay lots and then the rest will i'll pull out the the discs and put those aside to sell as a big lot of cd um, a big lot of cd loose cds um, and then the, the cases that are in good condition, I will keep. I don't have cracks. So I'll end up with some replacement cases. Um, but I'll undoubtedly probably use a lot of those as I replace cases for the local sale. I always replace the cases so that um, once I organize all those CDs, I don't have to worry about replacing cases and all that. I can just put them out on the sales floor. Um, and I've already seen some good, some good titles in there for my local sale. <clears throat> and people do buy a lot of CDs. They do definitely come and... Of a lot of CD buyers, so that's good. And I wanted to share with you. Uh, so I had a what I found for a few things I found for eBay, and as you can see here, I had about a dozen or so for Amazon, which is decent. Again, okay, so these CDs actually came from one of the mixed media uh, Gaylord Gaylords, and 
there wasn't a ton, as you can tell. Uh, I don't know how many that is, but 150 or so um, CDs. So there wasn't a ton in there. It was mostly DVDs. And um, I still have the other Gaylord left to go through, which is all CDs. There's some audiobooks in there as well. And there'll hopefully be some video games. And there's probably some software, but it'll be mostly majority, I don't know, 80% or more of, of just CDs. So I'll get a ton more CDs in there, probably 1,500 or more once I pull them all out. That's usually, the, it's usually anywhere between 1,500 to, to 2,000. It just depends on how many of them are actually CDs versus the other stuff that I mentioned. Because a lot of times there'll be a lot of audiobooks mixed in, which will take up space because they're bigger. Um, and I've already seen some on top of that one, but who knows? So let me share with you. What I have here for eBay, the first ones here on top are not ones that are selling that often. This one actually does, I sold a few. This um, Jazz, I believe. This one here, only sold one. This one, I don't believe there is one up there, but the same guy has sold some. So I'm gonna put it up on eBay. Uh, the cool ones here, so this one is Journey Generation. It's just a, a, a little sleeve. Anyway, the CD's in there. And so that one actually sells often on eBay. This one is um, Pretenders 2. And what I wanted to talk about a little bit is, is looking for the original CDs for some of these. Um, this one I'm going to list for 20 bucks, taking, up, uh, taking offers. And this one is from one of the original ones from 80, was it 1981, Sire Records. And that one does go for... A decent amount and so sometimes you want to pay attention to uh, the CDs that are the original ones that came out in the 80s even 90s that type of thing because there's been a lot of reproductions and so if it's the first issue of it the first running of it some of those uh, can be worth money so keep your eyes open for that and I'm also learning about which ones are worth money and which ones are to look for. And another one is Madonna. I found her original self-titled uh, CD from 80, 83. And I, I didn't sell it for that much money. But, you know, it's if you find the other ones that are printed later on, it's not going to be worth anything. But the earlier ones, I think I sold it for like 10 bucks or 11 bucks or something. Um, around 10 bucks. But I found the same one. And the cool thing is, so here it is, Madonna, right? <clears throat> got the eight songs on there. It's got Lucky Star, Borderline, um, Holiday, uh, Physical Attraction. So the cool thing about this one, though, is that the disc is normally, you know, normal, uh, whoopsie, normal looking disc, silver disc. This one is actually red. Now, I didn't figure that out until I looked it up on eBay. I figured out that the red, the fact that it was red made it valuable. But when I started looking it up, because I knew that I had already sold this one, I thought, oh, well, this is the same one that I sold before. Turns out, because the, the disc is red, it was a Target. It says it right here. Da, da, da. Tar Where is it? I did find it on here somewhere. Uh, it's a Target CD. Oh, she does not say it. What it does say, though, at the bottom, it says Made in Japan. I don't know if you can see it, but the very bottom there, uh, Made in Japan. Here, I'll go this way right there and it turns out that this red disc is a target disc made in japan and it actually goes for much more money um it sold for as much as like 35 bucks no more over 40 dollars uh and it's originally from japan made in japan uh, it's apparently pretty rare there's not that many copies right now on ebay i think there's only a couple so I'm willing to sit on this one. Uh, I'm going to list it for $50, taking offers. And, you know, even if I get $35 for it, that's great. Um, we'll see, because it has sold for around $40. Bucks. But those are the kind of things you got to be aware of. Some of these uh, Japanese ones are uh, discs that were made in Japan can go for really good money. So keep your eyes peeled for those as well. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to get to work on these CDs, and I will check in later. So it's Tuesday. And it's the end of the day, almost 5.30, so I'm going to head home. just wanted to make a quick video. I meant to upload a video today, but it turns out that one of the clips that I did, which was nine minutes long, there was no audio. So I was talking silently. 
And the other one, the video was flipped, and so it was the whole thing. And so part of that video will go up before this video. Or they'll, I'll put them up together. Anyway, so I talked about a lot of stuff in that video that no one will ever see. Uh, so I'll share some of it with you that I finished off. Let me show you going through the CDs that I had stacked up. I had a bunch stacked up there, which I believe I showed in the other video. Uh, and this is what's left. These are these are from the, the other, um, that last Mixed Media Gaylord. I had three of them here. This is the last one that's actually just CDs, predominantly CDs. And I went through the other two with help. And this is what's left here. Uh, this one I'm gonna do a big lot to put on eBay as a buy it now. So I'm gonna sort those out, put them alphabetical. Uh, this one is Christmas, I'm gonna do a Christmas lot. This is Celtic, Scottish, I don't have enough yet. So I'm gonna wait till I go through the other Gaylord. These are all ones that I keep um, adding to. They're, they're part of like a series or a certain types of CDs like the 20th century. Uh, Masters one, time life stuff. I have two of these ultimate seventies in this pile. Also do lifescapes. So anyway, so that's some of the stuff that's in there. And then this is uh, country. These are country music CDs. I'm gonna do a big lot. Buy it now. I don't know how many are in here. Maybe 50, 60, something like that. Pretty tall stack. So I'll do a buy it now. That should go. I'll take offers. Um, these two stacks here are genres by genre. And then the one back here is by artist or group. And so those I'm going to wait uh, until I finish off with these because I want to get these photo organized, photographed, and then listed uh, and up there to sell them as soon as I can. Um, and then tomorrow I'll probably go through the CDs and uh, the ones by artist and group, I'll alphabetize them and the other ones I'll put in their different genres, and then within the genres, I'll alphabetize them as well. I like to do all of that before I put them over here on the on the racks. Uh, like up top there is all <clears throat> different CDs by artist or group that is alphabetized, and those are duplicates. So those are ones that I can refill uh, when I go back to refill the CD racks. Um, I have them already alphabetized, already set up. It goes a lot quicker. So I prefer to just do that in the beginning and so that when I when I come down to actually preparing for my next sale, which this time I'm going to wait until the last about seven days or so, about a week before, before I start doing most of the restocking and pulling like mostly books. I'll probably pull some books out to make some room, that kind of stuff. Maybe some CDs we'll see uh, and we'll see about DVDs. But anyway, um, I'm going to leave that. But once, it, once I come to it, I'll be ready for it. Uh, I'll have the CDs all organized. The DVDs will do the same thing. I've got um, not a ton. I've got this box, the half a box, half a box, and that banker's box. That's all I have uh, of CDs that, that I'll be able to add to the next sale. Uh, that's not entirely true. I do, have, I do have some more over here. There's a few. There's a box there and there. So there's a couple more boxes. Um, I believe, oh, those are, no, those are different. Yeah, different. Ah, so those are all different ones. Um, so a little bit more than I thought, but at least I will have enough to restock a lot of the shelves so that I won't have to worry about getting more DVDs for my next sale. I'll, I'll peruse like Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, Craigslist, that kind of thing, just to see if there's any great deals out there. Where I could grab, you know, 500 DVDs for cheap, um, something like that, if it happens to come up. But I, I'm not going to worry about getting a Gaylord and having to sort through it. <clears throat> That's the thing about Gaylords; it's great that there's a lot in there, but a lot of times the, the discs fall out. There's broken discs. There's missing discs. Uh, it's all mixed up. You have to deal with the box and the pallet afterwards. You know, so there's a lot, a lot more involved than just buying, you know, five bankers boxes of DVDs. Um, and that's all you get. You don't have to worry about anything else. So, so anyway, so that's some of the <laughs> something to think about if you're getting into bulk. Um, anyway, so that's where I am. Uh, so tomorrow, I probably don't have time to take photos of any of these. Um, we'll see if I can maybe do the Christmas one. But anyway, uh, and so tomorrow I'll take photos of all those. Organize the CDs. I still have. I have three boxes over here. Uh, right here that I pulled from my storage right here that of, of books 
Uh, I was started to go through them during the sale. <clears throat> I just went through some more, pulled out two for Amazon down here, uh, a couple for eBay. And I just had my lister come by, drop off the stuff that she listed for me and pick up another box. There were 35 items that I gave to her, a mixture of books and CDs. So that's good. Um, so anyway, so I'm just gonna keep on plowing through all this, those books. And of course I have the whole Gaylord over here. So I'm debating about whether I want to dive into the Gaylord and try to get through it, or if I want to focus on going through more books. Um, so I'll decide that tomorrow. So anyway. So that's where my head is. Oh, I have these sealed DVDs, which I'll do a lot of. So I'm going to do a lot of those. And then... Um, I'm debating about these over here. You can see there's a bunch on the table. Uh, all of these CDs are all lots. And then there's another pile over here of lots. And those have been up for a little while. And then all of these DVDs. So I'm actually thinking to just convert them to uh, auctions. Well, um, yeah, the DVDs and probably these smaller CD lots. I'm thinking about just converting them to auction. I've sold you know, a good amount, but I still have those left. So I'm debating about just doing that to see if I can just get rid of them. Um, you know, you gotta have patience, <laughs> but sometimes patience runs out. So we'll see about that. Um, because what I'm enjoying now is these DVDs over here, these stacks are, auctions are gonna end soon. I just sold this one of kids DVDs, 14 DVDs. Uh, I think it ended up being like 13 bucks or 14 bucks. Uh, so I'm glad I did that only I used to only do auctions for CD lots and DVD lots and I would go through them really quick and some would do better than others but my main thing was to make some money off of them and get them out of here and so I've been experimenting with doing more buy it nows and you just have to be more patient <laughs> wait for the right person to come along and I'm not very patient with that stuff I have to admit um, so I might be converting those to, to auctions because it's just, you gotta weigh it, right? Like what's what's more important to you? And sometimes I kinda, sometimes it depends. Sometimes I'm like, ah, I'll wait it out, make more money off of them. And other times I'm like, no, I just wanna, you know, I'm starting to feel like I wanna just get rid of them. Um, so all these boxes down here, well, I should say there's four left are all one, two, three, four. Those are all DVD lots that will be ending, I believe, uh, well, this week anyway. By Thursday, I think they're all ending. So that'll clear out all that space. The DVDs that are on top of them will go away. Uh, I'll go through those boxes. So I'm gonna clear out a lot of space. And then I'm gonna list these and we'll see what happens with that. I have some records going here that I'm gonna list, uh, or I have to take pictures of and list at some point. And um, that's about it. So basically, I just have a lot of, uh, I've got a Gaylord of CDs to go through. Uh, and then I have another, I, I counted about 85 or so, you know, in the 80 and 90 range of boxes of books in the storage unit. And then I still have three, three Gaylords foolish of records. So a little over three, three and a quarter or so, probably when you add them all up. Um, of Gaylords of Records, and so that's something else that I need to go through because I just want to get rid of that storage unit because I'm paying for it. It's not that expensive, but it's like 100, I think it's 120, 130, something like that. Um, and the sooner I get rid of it, the sooner I don't have to pay for it. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to go forward with any more Gaylords of Records unless my source offers them to me for really, really cheap. <sighs> but I'll probably just stick them in here because I have the room. So um, I don't really need the storage unit after that, after I go through those Gaylords. And I can't move the Gaylords over here because I don't have a truck with a lift gate and I'm not gonna go through the whole hassle of, of uh, renting one and all that stuff. So um, so the sooner I get through all that stuff, the better. Uh, the, the, it'll take a while. I mean, I don't even know if I'll get through all of that before the next sale, which is in five weeks. I'll def I definitely, if I, if I go for it hard, I can get through those books uh, within probably two weeks. And the, and the records will probably take some time. But what I, th uh, 
I've been thinking about doing with the records is because there's so many that are just not good for my local sale. They're just the kind of records that, that people just don't want to buy. And I don't think it's worth it for me considering how much I spent on them, which wasn't that much, $100 a Gaylord. Uh, I don't think it's worth it for me to really go through them with a fine tooth comb and look up every single one and try to make every last dime off of them. So I'm just going to, you know, take it as a learning experience that I would rather buy records in bulk locally, knowing what I'm getting versus doing it blindly, not knowing what's in there. And there's just a lot of stuff that's no good. A lot of the older stuff, you know, the big band, the swing, classical, uh, uh, a lot of jazz. You know, some of that stuff, of course, you can look on eBay and it's selling, but it's time consuming with records. It's not like CDs, it's a lot easier, uh, or DVDs. It's a lot more time consuming. And I definitely do find some nice ones in there. I mean, the stack is growing here for eBay. So there are some, one, some in there. Uh, that are you know that are that are good and that I can put out for sale. I'd rather have a smaller amount of new records that I add to the sale that are better quality than having as many. I mean, look how many I have out here. This whole table, except for that small box of 45, so one, two, three, four, five, six crates were all added to the new sale. But I mean, look how many I'm left with. Again, I didn't have hundreds of people come, but um, you know, even if I had like 200 people come, I would have sold more. But I don't think. There's just a lot of stuff in there I don't think that people would buy. Um, I need a much bigger audience like like eBay for people to buy certain stuff that's in there. So I think I'm just going to become uh, more of a, you know, uh, what does it call? Bulk buyer of records locally. Anyway, so we'll see. So that's where I am. So I have a lot of stuff, books, CDs, and records to go through. So plenty. I'm not going to be buying um, any Gaylords for at least a couple of months, if at all. Try, I know I keep saying this, but trying to uh, not do too many Gaylords, um, they're just, it's just a lot of work. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so we'll talk about that another time. But thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I'm going to head home and I will talk to you later. Keep booking and stay safe. I just thought I'd share this book with you. I told you about it <clears throat> in the previous short clip about the sales. It's called Exercising in Bed by this guy, Sanford Bennett, and it is signed by him. There's a signature. Back when penmanship was a big deal, Mr. James Jeffries, with the author's compliments. And there's his name, Sanford Bennett. San Francisco, January 7th, 1909. That's right, 111 years ago. 111 years ago, Sanford Bennett signed this. Pretty cool. So it is literally about doing exercises while, whoopsie, in bed. It's hard with one hand to show you, but like, here's an example. There's a bunch of pictures of him doing exercises in bed. I mean, it's pretty cool though, with all the photos. Why get out of bed when you can just do exercising in bed?